Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. I'm Thomas, and today you join me at HB Autos in Glasgow to talk about the BMW 4 Series 420i M Sport Coupe. So stay tuned for this video. Now, I wanted to bring this car to you today because this particular model has quite a few features on it that are optional extra that make it stand out a little bit more from other BMW 4 Series and I thought why not take this opportunity to get this car on the channel and to you all. So as you can see this is the current generation 4 Series shares its kind of underpinnings with the current 3 Series and the 3 Series Estate, the G20 Series I believe is internal coding for this. This does have the Beaver grille up front that was controversial at first but I think we've all just got used to it. But you'll notice on this particular model we do have the adaptive cruise control guidance system down there built into the grille and a BMW thing that I remember seeing back in the day on the F10 5 series was the grilles that open and close behind it. Obviously right now we are closed and even up front here we can see the little camera. Overall I think the car is quite handsome and aesthetically pleasing. What do you all think about the car? Go ahead, lift the bonnet up, two pulls inside, and that's what I like about BMWs as you can get inside the bonnet without having to lift another lever. Up front, this is our 2 litre 4 cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. This car can also come with a 6 cylinder as well, diesels, other powertrains are available. These M Sport wheels are two tone, and they're not bad for 19 inch rims. I said they're quite aggressive looking with the red calipers. I do like the design of them. Um, yeah, not too much to say about the wheels. Uh, Park sense on the side there. And the character lines on this 4 Series are handsome and I would say they're not like, ag they're not aggressive or anything like, overly fussy. Um, it's just a nice clean cut vehicle. And again you can see this little camera here on the side mirror for the 360 camera. Now move over to the back of the car. I do like the rear lights on the 4 Series. And this particular model does have a power tailgate, so we push that button there and the tailgate opens up. As we can see inside, this boot goes fairly far back as it is made coupled with the 3 series. So we do have little pull tabs here to fold the seats down and it does go fairly far back. Um, this particular one is lined with the rubber BMW lining so it just protects your car from getting dirty. Ideal for chucking things in there, maybe from dump runs or whatever it could be. Um, Nice squared off shape, not too much to say, the boot's a boot, um, go ahead and close the boot up. What I do like about this car as well, is they're not in all BMWs, but look, the BMW badge incorporates the rear camera. I think that's really clever, instead of it being hanging out, you know, somewhere third party down here. Now it does have twin exhaust pipes, which as we can see down here, Give it a little symmetry. Uh, I vaguely remember previous generations you'd have like one tail pipe at one side, at least it's, you've got two, kind of a little bit more symmetrical bit going on. And being M Sport, we do have little plastic bits. These are not functional, but little plastic grills on the side. Now we're going to go ahead and jump inside the car. You're going to love the interior of this, or you might hate it, but I quite like it. So here we have almost a cricket ball red interior. I said it's nice and contrasting to the black and it's nice just to see not a black German car interior. Uh, a BMW thing that I had on the X3 are these little M piping on the seat belts. As you can see a nice colour contrast, door cards nice high quality, this is a rubberized material with the kind of stitching on top and again this is that same material that's on the seats carried over to the door cards to give it a plush plush kind of vibe and then a little bit metallic bit there. This particular car does have the Harman Kardon sound system upgrade so you can see that up in the tweeters and having had that in previous BMWs that is a good system. Now up front we do have electrically adjustable seats as you can see there. Not too much you're going to see out of other BMW videos I've done but in sport seats relatively figure hugging and what I do like about them is the thigh support you get in a BMW. I think that's always handy for longer trips. 
Now, one thing you notice in the 4 Series, it's a bit like, it reminds me of the CLK, back in the day, I think it was the first time I remember coming across it, it was a little butler for the seatbelt. I didn't even have that in my Lexus, so it's quite nice to see that. Kindly prompts the seatbelt for you, saves you leaning all the way back to get yourself buckled in. This is a really terrible angle <laughs> for today's video, but unfortunately I've put some overlay so you're not going to have to see my face too much at this weird angle. So up front we do have a semi-integrated iDrive. This particular one is the same as we've seen on the X3 and it is touchscreen which is great because it gives you the blend of touchscreen with the iDrive controller because it gives you the best of both worlds. So depending on what you want to do you're able to jump in between like screen and using the controller. Nice easy system and I do like the fact we do have the BMW buttons 1 to 8. Do you know I remember seeing this back in the day with my one series, well, it feels like 10 years ago now probably it is, and it's just really handy because you can save call contacts, you know, maybe your phone, somebody regularly, or you can have your favourite radio station, whatever you want, you can have these preset, push a button and it does kind of pop up, as you can see up there, are, are all unassigned at the moment, but yeah, they're quite handy. So this car is fitted with being their gesture control. Super sub there. there so go. they're the most... And I will say, having had a BMW with that and loved with that for a few years, I think it's a gimmick. <laughs> I don't really use it too much, but it's something you can show your friends. I do like the fact on the dash we've got this rubberized texture, a little bit of black gloss plastic with the mid lighting. It wouldn't be a Cars of Glasgow review without a glove box reveal. This one's softly damp, lined with the fuzzy stuff, and it's got little shelves in there for your bits and bobs to be separated. As you can see, you've got mood lighting that is changeable in this car, and I think BMW does a good job of keeping that kind of classic without overdoing it. Um, and the build quality inside the 4 Series is impeccable because it is like solidly built, robust feeling. You know, there's not too much in terms of like squeaky plastics or anything like that. Yes, I'd probably rather this was a silver trim or something so you're not getting fingerprints on it, but that is an optional piece. But yeah, the interior, as you can see, nice softly padded materials and this material is easy to wipe because you are going to get that dirty with maybe feet prints or things like that. So passenger door card similar to the driver except you don't get the memory seats over there. This particular one as well you can see that the mid lighting purple shining down and you're able to fit a bottle and other goodies in here. Seats himself it's a nice material on the um, it's not the softest or plushest weather but BMWs never really do unless you go up to like seven or eight series I think it was a merino leather on top of my head. And this just feels like the Dakota rather you'd have got back in the day on the F series vehicles. So I'm going to go ahead and start the car up, foot in the brake, and that two litre comes to life. Now, this is a 420i, so you're going to get about 180 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in the 7 second range, and I do like this configurable screen here. So this particular car does have the driver assist, it's not really going to show too well while we're parked up but you can see the little BMW pops up and shows you when you're out in the road the kind of range you've got. Now what I do have in front of me is a nice clear heads up display as it gives you the important information like your speed, your sat nav controls will all come through there as well so that's quite a nice wee feature so you don't really have to take your eyes off the road. And little things like the buttons for the heated seats and the heated steering wheel are just nice to have. They're not buried within menus, you can just reach them and they're turned on like that within seconds. We do have a standard M Sport steering wheel. You're going to be familiar with this with other BMW products. Nice chunky bolsters at the kind of 11 and 2 o'clock position. The silver trim, I do like this kind of stitching on the middle of the airbag cover. It does make it look more premium. As I mentioned, you do have the heated steering wheel button there. Flappy paddles behind, but realistically, 420i, you're just going to go ahead and leave it in drive. And down here, as you said, I've touched on before, iDrive controller, buttons here for your camera and your parking. Push them up, camera pops up. Traction control off, um, engine start stop off, obviously turning the whole car on and off. And these are your driving modes. So back in the day, you got a little toggle switch. Now it's flat buttons to put into sport normal or eco mode depending on what you want to do you can have it adaptive as well but probably realistically you're going to have it in comfort and normal auto hold and your parking brake now up front not all four series have this due to the chip shortage but we do have a wireless charging pad here usb charger 12 volt power outlet as well as dual cup holders and this one has a little nice tray and 
black that covers across. Under the centre armrest, we do have a little bit of storage in here. It's nice and rubberized, so if anything spills, you can wipe it. It's got a little light in there, so at night time you're going to find it. And it does have a USB-C charger inside there, so that's nice to see as well for 2020. And for everybody looking for the in-depth experience, on the right-hand side here is where your light controls are. Typically the Minolta, where you can put your side lights on, full beam, turn them off if you wish. Door locks, lock and unlock. And then we also have your window switches and your mirror that you can easily control, as well as your two memory seats. The one cool feature on the door lock is the fact it's got an analog mechanism that goes up and down. More and more these days you're seeing little lights, or like even just removing that altogether and just giving a light on the dash, if not on the door. Now we're seeing, in this BMW, a mechanical kind of lock. You can hear that clicking up and down. So overall cabin quality in the 4 Series is what you'd expect of a German brand such as BMW. Very well built, solid feeling. I don't know, there's not really any rattling plastics and that's what BMW do well. I always feel like their cars are quite solid and well built. And that's one thing you get with the 4 Series. You don't feel like you're cheapening out on this. Mind you, this is an expensive vehicle. And new, and the 4 Series these days is going to be north of about £50,000 for a decent spec one. So that's been there be loaded with technology, things like it shows you where your drawers are going to open to, you can see the trajectory of your steering wheel when you're turning the wheel, and I love how the fact that even pops up on the 3D model of the car there. It also has things like reversing your system that remembers the last inputs and can get you a tight parking space. I remember Joe Kelly's doing that in the 8 series a good few years ago. I'll be honest, I had it in the X3 and I think I used it once for a video and that was about it. Up above you've got things like your SOS button, you know, your lights, there's not too much going on up here, um, but I just wanted to show you, and at night that kind of projects a little bit of a design flare that you can see with the exterior kind of carpet lighting. Also have a nice little <laughs> vanity light and you could probably like a card there or a tool pass or something could fit in that little clip there. So let's go ahead and jump inside the back of the four, as it's electric, it's going to slowly pull forward. Let's get myself in here. So that's me pulled the door closed. Let's pull the seat back. Will it stop? Will it stop? There we go. So the seat's in a comfortable position up front for myself. I'm in the back, five foot eleven. I've got a couple of inches of knee room, foot room. I even have mood lighting back here, which is nice to see. I've been there even been kind enough here to give us air vents as well as USB-C charger, so you can fit children or adults back here and they'll be entertained and plug in their devices. We even have little storage pockets behind here to store items. Whilst I'm in the back of the 4 Series, we do have nice quality materials contained into the back of the cabin. And we do also have these little weird pockets down here, which I guess maybe a small can of juice or something would fit in there. An unusual shape. I'm not quite sure what you would fit in there because the aperture is not that wide. Um, and you've got a really small armrest, but I guess it's better than nothing. And your greenhouse back here is a little bit of room. These are fairly usable uh, for two people back here. And there is even a centre armrest with cup holders. So BMW have obviously thought. Yes, you can take your family in the back of the 4 Series Coupe. It's also worth noting back here, we do have the child seat anchors that you just lift these bits up and you can slide your child seat in. So this is a family friendly coupe. Now, my headroom is, I can fit and it'll be fine for a short journey or if I crouch down like this, then I guess I could squeeze in maybe for a small road trip, but ideally children um, or picking up somebody for a short journey but yeah it's not the probably for one practicality maybe the Grand Coupe or just get a free series estate with the squared off boot um, roof back there to give a little bit more headroom but as the shoulder room knee room is pretty decent now let's enjoy trying to get out of the car so we'll slide that forward and see its seat doing its thing sliding down and forward like so reach out grab that handle at the tracks and we can get 
out the car. So being five foot 11, I've got plenty of room for a headroom, shoulder room, you can get really comfortable in this car. And there is adjustment in the steering wheel for reach and rake, as well as the seat can go up and down. Because the seats are electric as well, we've got a lot more adjustment and it's almost infinite adjustment it feels like just because you can go down a little bit, up a little bit, back a bit, wherever you want to do you can get comfortable. And a little seat belt buckler is helpful. And I also like the fact the seat belts have got this little BMW kind of M uh, tricolour on it which is nice to see. I think the X3 had that as well but it's a nice kind of little nod to BMW Motorsports and the M Sport products. And if you're looking at a BMW 4 Series, you can get a range of petrol, diesel, rear-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. Um, and if you want the i4, that is the 4 Series kind of Grand Coupe. That doesn't come as a standard coupe like this at the moment. Um, but there's a variety for you and you can step up to the BMW M4 if you want that ultimate performance of the M4 competition. Um, there's an M4 or an M3 or a... Basically, a 3 series, 4 series for everybody at each stage. If you want a state, they've got you covered, really. Um, so, you may as well check out if you're into the brand and you like the kind of driving dynamics, quality interior, technology. That's what you're going to get with this um, brand and this class of car. Now, this does rival cars such as the Audi A4, an A5, Mercedes Benz C Class. Now, that new CLE, I think it's called now, the one that's in between the C Class and E Class combined for the coupe. That's just came out. Um, there's not really too many other vehicles that compete with this. The Jaguar XE is pretty much non existent. We've got the Volvo S60, um, and then there's not really anything else. I think there's a Genesis GV70, a G70, sorry, uh, that has an estate and a saloon as well. Um, but yes, if you're looking for a quality feeling product, good driving dynamics, rear wheel drive in this particular instance, you may as well check out the Force Series.